Things have been going well on the Arlesdale Railway since its opening a few months ago. So well, in fact, that the owners had decided to expand the line further into the mountains, as far as the town of Peel Godred. Bert had been assigned to the project, as his recent rebuild had made him the most powerful of the three Arlesdale engines. Construction was proceeding quite rapidly. A new station had already been built just beyond Arlesdale, although it hadn't been named yet. An old lead mine had also been reopened, but now it provided ballast for the little engines to take down to the Northwest Railway. It seems to be coming along quite nicely, Bert commented to the foreman of the construction crew one morning. You've had to do surprising a little earthworks, the foreman replied. If I didn't know better, I'd say the ground's already been graded. I see. Well, I'd better get going. With a cheerful toot of his whistle, he departed. Later that evening, Bert was waiting up at the construction site with a passenger train to take the workmen home. His driver was up at the station, enjoying a hot cup of tea on this cool evening. Only the sounds of the workmen finishing off for the day and the wind whistling through the trees broke the silence. Bert jumped as an owl hooted nearby. He couldn't help feeling a little bit scared. I hope those workmen finish soon, he said. They're just doing a proper job, youngster. Have some patience. Bert gasped. That hadn't been Rex or Mike, and he couldn't see anyone else around who could have spoken. He was too afraid to say anything else. His driver returned a few moments later. Something wrong, Bert? He asked. You look like you've seen a ghost. I must have dozed off for a couple of minutes while I was waiting, Bert replied. He didn't quite believe what he was saying. He didn't say much on the way back either. He was still shaken by the voice that he'd heard. You were rather quiet last night, Rex commented the next morning. I don't know what you're talking about, Bert said. Pull the other wheel, Bert, Mike chipped in. I've never seen you look so scared as you did last night. Bert knew that his two friends wouldn't let up until they had an answer, so reluctantly he told them what had happened last night. Maybe you heard a ghost, Bert, Rex chuckled. Yes, Mike added. I thought you looked a bit spooked. Bert said nothing. He just headed off to take his first train. A few hours later, Mike was bringing some ballast toppers down from the old mine that had been reopened. To say he was in a bad mood would be putting it mildly. He was going to have to run backwards to Arlesdale, as there was no turntable at the very end of the line yet. It was raining lightly too, but the worst part was that he was pulling trucks. He stopped just after reaching the main line, and his driver jumped out to set the points to head back towards Arlesdale. Stupid trucks, Mike grumbled. Why can't we just take passenger cars? It was a rhetorical question. Young scamp, do you realize a railroad can't survive on passenger traffic alone? And what would you do in the winter, sit in a shed for three months? Well, it'd be more comfortable than running through the snut. Mike broke off as he realized he was arguing with thin air. He peered suspiciously down the track towards the construction site at the end. He had thought that Bert had had a couple of bolts loose in the smoke box, but now he suspected that the workmen might have been playing tricks on them. As Mike backed up towards Arlesdale, he made up his mind to find out what was going on. The rain had cleared up by the time Mike reached Arlesdale. He had run around his trucks and he was just being turned when Bert steamed in with a load for the construction site. Bert, Mike said, I think we've been had. What do you mean? Mike explained what he'd heard while his driver had been switching the points. A puzzled frown crossed Bert's face. There's definitely something going on here, he said. A few days ago, the foreman told me that the roadbed had already been graded. That would explain why construction's going so quickly, Mike said. Grading, preparing the roadbed for the tracks to be laid, was the most time-consuming process of any railroad construction. Do you think there might have been railroad here before? I don't know, Bert replied. I might be able to help, Bert's driver said. My sister's a bit of an expert on the local history of this area. I'll talk to her tonight. The two engines exchanged excited looks. It seemed they might be onto something. The next morning, Bert's driver arrived with a young woman, who he introduced as his sister, Sarah. My brother told me about this extension to your railway. I'm sure the people along it will be happy to have train service again. The engines were stunned. Again? Mike asked, bewildered. Sarah nodded. This new line is following the old mid Sodor Railway. It ran from Arlesdale all the way to Peel Godred. Your new station is almost where the old Arlesdale North one was. What do you know about it? Rex asked. There were three engines on the line. Duke was the oldest, and he was named after the Duke of Sodor. Stuart and Falcon were younger, and had arrived around the same time. Duke kept the other two in order, but it wasn't enough to save the line. It closed down years ago. Stuart and Falcon were bought by the Scale Lowy Railway. What about Duke? The last records we have indicate that he was left in the railway's main workshop. As far as we can tell, he's still there. There are two clergymen looking for Duke. I'll tell them what you found. Later that day, Bert had just finished shunting a supply train for the construction site. He couldn't help thinking about what Sarah had said that morning, and he hoped that Duke would be found. He was about to leave when the manager came up to him. Bert, these two gentlemen would like to see the spot where we think you heard Duke. Bert glanced over to where two gentlemen were waiting outside the station. Can you take them on this train? I'd be happy to, Bert replied. 
He quickly shunted a coach onto the head of his train, then they set out. Do you think you'll find Duke? Bert asked as the train got underway. We hope so, replied the thinner of the two gentlemen. They soon reached the end of the extension. Bert slowed to a halt just at the spot where he'd heard Duke's voice. It seemed to come from over by that dead tree, he said. Thank you, Bert, we appreciate it, said the thinner of the two gentlemen. The two gentlemen looked round as Bert continued down the line to take the supplies to the workmen. There's a gap in the tree line on that hill over there, the thinner one observed. The stout gentleman nodded understandingly. There must have been something preventing trees from taking root there. The two gentlemen climbed the hill and started looking round for any clues that could lead them to Duke's shed. They searched high and low. It was the stout gentleman who eventually found it, and quite by accident. Taking a step down the hill, he felt the ground go out from beneath him. He landed with a thump and the thin gentleman dashed over. Are you all right? he called. Yes, came the reply, and so is Duke. Were you looking for me? wheezed Duke. Yes, for months. In that case, I'm glad you dropped in. The thin gentleman quickly made his way down to the construction site. We found Duke, he said. Would your men be able to get him out? It'll take most of the day, but we can get it done. The men worked hard, and after a few hours, most of the shed was revealed. Duke smiled as the sunlight reached him for the first time in years. It's good to have some fresh air again, he said. The workmen laid down some temporary rails. The two gentlemen climbed into Duke's cab and fired him up. Duke slowly eased forward, his joints creaking. Bert arrived as Duke slowly eased out of the shed. It's a pleasure to meet you, Duke. I'm Bert. You must be the youngster I spoke to a couple of nights ago. Yes, you gave me quite a fright. Both engines chuckled. Is this new line following our old route to Peel Guard Red? I believe so. This route, the people and towns along it, they're yours now. Take good care of them. We will, Bert promised. You have nothing to worry about, Duke. Soon, two lorries arrived. They carefully backed over onto the railroad's right of way from the road next to the construction site. Goodbye, Duke, Bert said as the lorries backed down. Good luck on your new railway. You take care, youngster. Duke was loaded onto the lorries and they headed off to take the old engine to his new home on the Scarlowy Railway.